Well, hello to everybody out there in this great big world. Yes, this is your brother Dana, and I'm coming to you from the city of Atlanta, from a place in one love. These videos are intended for you, uh, my Hebrew family members, those of us who are awoken and being awoke even more and more as we walk in truth and revelation. And as you know, before these videos, I always make an emphasis to whom that video is intended for. And so a few days ago when I made the video, Jesus it isn't against abortion. Um, either I did not communicate effectively, which I'll take responsibility always. But my intent of that video was to only call out my white evangelical family members in the hypocrisy of their pro-life and the, and the sanctity of life for the unborn fetus versus you, my black brothers and sisters who are born and walking amongst us. The purpose of that video was to call out their hypocrisy to why they call it abortion and not murder because if they called it murder, they would have to then change the laws that allow us to execute you without even having a voice to speak your innocence. But in this video to you, my family members, I wanna share though with you where I am in this journey and my stance as of now concerning abortion and the government coming in to make people follow, even if it's their biblical belief. And I guess I can't get past the number one thing that says the Father himself says that I will lay before you life and death blessings and curses, and you choose. Even like Joshua, he said, as for me and my family, we will choose to follow the Most High Yah. And I guess I feel like if I force somebody to do something out of their own will, then I am doing what my white evangelical, white superiority, heterosexual male people have done since the foundation of this nation believe that they are God, that they have the right to do what the Most High Yah himself says he won't do. Meaning he gives us the free will to individually choose what he lays before us. Life or death, blessings or curses. And I'm passionate about that because for 30 years, years of my life, these past 30 years, the Most High Yah has taken me on a journey out of this white supremacy, think you all that in a bag of chips, above everybody else, making you follow the rules that we ourselves don't. Look at what's happening right now with President Trump. He's put me on 30 years to walk with the individuals in this society that would be considered abomination and hated and unwanted. And that is from walking the streets with our young black men or those gang members out in the streets where I began to learn their stories. I began to hear their pain and feel it. From there, unfortunately, to Cook County Jail and the prison system in Illinois where over 18 years, I had the honor and the privilege to be able to go into Division 10 maximum security where I was bringing hope, I pray, and love most of all to these men right to their jail cell. And before I walked in there that first day, I remember as if it's right now that the Most High Yah spoke to me and said, Son, you will never ask anyone what they've done. And if they tell you, begin to, you cut them off and say, I don't want to hear it. And the reason is, is because my heart is biased and my heart is not as pure as Yahshua HaMashiach. So I know that if an individual shared with me that they stole some money from the government versus another individual that raped and murdered an elderly woman, I knew 
that my biases, my emotions, and the impurity in my heart would not love that individual the same as the other. And the Most High Yah spoke to me and said, you come in here as a vessel of light. They're already facing the consequences of their behavior. And I have used that in every step of my journey over these last 30 years because then into the education system, I've learned the unfair injustices that have set up my black young men and sisters for failure to pipeline them, as they say, to prison. And I think about what if I never left that self-righteous attitude to believe that you, my black family members, are in jail because you fail to be domesticated in following the laws and the ways of us here in America. But when I've walked with you for these 30 years, it has crushed my heart and my spirit. It has humbled me. Because I've gotten the full story now. And it's changed my attitude. It's changed my heart. And I live by this, family. I can justify and say that I am calling out somebody to correct them. But see, only the pure in heart shall see the Most High Yah. So I can look at somebody about to have an abortion or say, I'm against it because I want to correct these individuals. But see, in my heart, it's not pure. It's not the pure love that our Yahshua HaMashiach had as he reminded me when he was on the cross, being aborted or murdered, lied on, abused. And yet he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He had compassion on them because he knew the consequences of their behavior. But yet, like the two thieves, he gave each of them the opportunity to embrace him, blessings, or to reject him, curses. But he didn't force anyone. See, these years I've walked with the young people in our education system that I can tell almost from kindergarten that they're not wanted. And it's those young kids that the pro-lifers begin to complain to me about asking me, you know, they need to be moved out of this school. They're interfering with my child's education. See, I believe in my life that if I say that I stand for justice, then my walk should indicate that. And that my life should be a sacrifice unto fixing the injustices that fall upon you, my black brothers and sisters. For me to hold a sign for me to shout, we need justice, and yet do nothing physically and sacrifice my life for what I believe in, then I need to shut up and sit down. I believe in life, but I also believe if I'm gonna fight for life, then I'm going, you will see that in my life, and. I get frustrated when there's 450 plus thousands orphans in this country. And with all the pro-lifers out there, I don't understand why we need orphanages. I worked at one for a couple of years. Broke my heart. We would beg for people to temporarily take upon a child as we work with the parents. We would give money to coax pro-lifers and people who don't believe in abortion. 
but yet we have 450 some thousand that are looking for a place. I believe Yeshua HaMashiach has called us to live his life that by my love walking into those jail cells and loving them and, and his perfect love casting out their fear and their shame and, and healing them of all the bruises and everything they've gone through will do more in their life than for me to walk in and say, shame on you, look at you, you're facing the consequences of your decisions and of your behavior. And if the Most High Yah judges me, then I have decided personally that I ask Him to judge me because I loved too much. And I forgave too much. This is where my heart is, family. And that is why I've decided to live my life, yes, to be pro-life, to fight in these schools, to intercede on behalf of these students that are being kicked out for no reason, are being labeled, are being despised, and to walk with them, to defend them, because I believe in life, not because I speak it from my mouth, not because I can spit out scripture but because Jesus told me, Yahshua told me to take care of the orphan, to show mercy and justice and to fight for it, to feed them. That's why I had an after-school program. I had a mentoring program in Chicago where I started with five young men. And within eight years, I saw almost 250 to 500 kids from the neighborhood, two to three nights a week. We fed every kid that would walk into that church on Sunday afternoons and Saturdays. And I don't say this for anybody to pat me on the shoulders because I sure in the heck haven't done this for anybody except for the Most High Yah because that's what he called me to do. But now today, 20, 25, 30 years later, when they were 13 and now Joe or Alan who are now 40, 45 years old, I still talk to them on a regular basis. And Alan said these words to me. He says, you know, he said this to my mom. Dana was different. He never really judged us kids. He would love on us. And when we would make mistakes, he would ask us, how could we do things different? What kind of help do we need to make things different? But just because he cared about us and led us off the streets to a safe place, we decided that we wanted to make him proud and start making the right choices. So I'm not going to change the way I live my life. I personally have decided that I will not be greater than what I believe the Most High Yah has shown himself to be, as in making someone do when he himself has given all of us free will. And I will focus on my heart, which will be accountable to the Most High Yah, that he will help me remove any impurities in the way I look at certain people, that he would move, remove biases I have because of own personal experiences, and that I will walk and I will love as pure as Yahshua HaMashiach did, hopefully to a place that while I'm being even murdered or killed, or spat upon, that I will in my heart say, Father, please forgive him, for he know not what he do, because I want to live my life like my big brother, like my example, Yahshua HaMashiach. You know, and as I end here, the very name One Love, was given to me purposefully. Thus I share why I will stand on love. But also one love was given through a bunch of young inner city black males that the school had washed their hands of, said they won't even graduate, move on. But yet, 
at the end of a semester, these 30 young men held each other accountable and encouraging and tutoring in any way. None of them flunked. Every single one of them passed. And they're the ones that came up with the name One Love. And just the other day, one of the main leaders reached out to me to give me an update that he's getting married. And he said, thank you for your love during my senior year. He said, you helped me through all of the things that I went through that nobody else cared to ask me about. And when you did and you said, I'm sorry you have experienced it, he said, at that point I decided that I don't want to destroy my life because I'm angry at the world. For they will know we belong to the Most High Yah, that we are disciple of Him by our love. Love conquers all. And for 30 years, the Most High Yah has asked me to love the unlovable and to hope and pray with all my heart that even those that have that rebellious spirit would come in touch with the, the incredible love of the Most High Yah and it will break that rebelliousness, that arrogance, that pride, that sin, that wrong desire, and change them to desire purity in living their life for the incredible Father that has opened our eyes to all of this truth and revelation of who he is. So this is your brother Dana just... Um, Coming from a place in one love, from my heart to yours, hoping that it encourages you and maybe clarifies a little bit, but also shares a little bit more about who I am and the desires of my heart. All right, family. Shalom.